This interview is brought to you by Burn Up Coaching and the 21 Day Challenge. If you're an entrepreneur, a high achiever, you're feeling stuck or lost or just not tapped into your true potential, the 21 Day Challenge is going to help you get back reignited with your passion and your self-belief so you can succeed like never before. What we'll do is we'll dial in your long-term goals, break it down into bite-sized steps, and you'll have one-on-one daily accountability to achieve your top priority. And 21 days later, you will be achieving that goal. Okay, this 21-day challenge, send me a message on Facebook or message me at chris at beyourgps.com and let me know you're ready for your 21-day challenge. Thanks in advance for doing that. Next up is going to be the iTunes review of the week. This week, it's by Unlimited Beliefs. And Unlimited says, helpful, usable content. I really like this show. This content is so helpful because it's told through the story of the guest, which is relatable. It's easy to plug in and use as well as inspiring along the way. Tune in. Thanks so much, Unlimited Beliefs. If you want to give us a review, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes and let us know uh, what you're loving about the show and what can be improved and how we can take it to that next level. Thanks so much in advance for doing that. Next is going to be the intro for this incredible human being, Tucker. He's been on the show before. He absolutely rocked it. So make sure you stay till the end. You you invest the, the 60 minutes or 50 minutes or so into this interview to get all the juice, to get all the wisdom because Tucker is a powerhouse, okay? Let me read his intro and then we'll bring him on the screen. Tucker Bearden is a theoretical physicist. Keynote speak hinders one's natural abilities to understand social cues as well as emotional responses known as Asperger's. After being fired from over 20 different jobs, for his lack of communication skills, Tucker started working with thoroughbred race horses. Working seven days a week, 365 days a year, Tucker had to find a way to entertain himself, so he searched through YouTube and found something known as TED Talks, which changed his life forever. Tucker knew he had found his purpose, but he had to overcome severe anxiety that was generated while being around people. In spite of countless panic attacks and two heart attacks on his journey, Tucker refused to give up. After that, he began giving homeless people pizzas and asking to hear their story. Through this, Tucker learned how to communicate and found that if you can be the blessing for others, you will live within blessings and your greatest challenges will become your most powerful strengths. And we're blessed to have him here with us today. Tucker, are you ready to rock the house, my brother? Absolutely, Bo. Absolutely. I love it. I love it, man. Thanks so much for being here. You're now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Welcome back to the show, man. We're, we're blessed to have you. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me on here, man. You, I love your show. You do such an amazing job. I'm honored to, I'm honored to be here and be a guest because, dude, this, this show right here just blows it out of the water. It's such That's an right. amazing content. That's right, man. 12 hours straight. We're just delivering the goods, helping people be their GPS, man. So we're going to dive right into the theme of the day, which is make 2019 your best year ever. So Tucker, how are you making 2019 your best year ever? And how can our audience do the same thing? I I tell you what, I wake up every single day and I write down my goals of the day. And, and what I, what I, what I want to relay to people is that don't wait until January 1st to set your your or what do they call those your your, your resolutions new year's resolutions yeah, yeah new year's resolution it, it's not a new year's resolution it's mm. just a resolution the yeah. new year is an excuse and if you if you blame if you if you put all of it on one date and say well i'm gonna start then mm. well i'll tell you what's gonna happen Today is going to become tomorrow, and tomorrow is going to become someday, and there ain't no someday on the calendar. So nope. start now that's and right. just refresh it. Hey, wow. that's yeah. over here. Dude, so don't don't put it off. If you can do it today, if you can like really dial that in today, start making progress on it today. Don't don't wait till a day an external thing to happen. Say right now is all that there is. So I got to make that decision right now. I get to step into that new reality right now and I'm the creator. I'm I'm choosing the moment that everything changes. That's is that what you're saying, Tucker? Absolutely, man. You I mean you you have the power to change your life in an instant. It's yeah. uh, people they 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 hold they're held back and they they believe that it's because of their past. They mm-hmm. believe it's because of their fears. They believe that it's because of something that someone else has done or or the position that they're in. And it's really not. It's it's your frame of mind. You know, Zig Ziglar said, you got to get rid of this thinking, thinking. And recently, recently, I became a certified Ziglar legacy. So that's what this little golden pen is for. Amazing, man. 
I represent Zig everywhere, and that's one of his main principles is get rid of that stinking thinking and realize that you do have greatness within you if you'll only tap into it and, and become the greater version of yourself and know your destiny to be. Yeah, hundred percent, man. That's that's it. Just tapping into that greatness. So, Tucker, you're you're like tapping into your greatness. And for people who don't know that much about you, they're just getting connected with you, building the relationship with you. Tell them a little bit more about what you stand for, and you know why you got this this uh, you know Zig Ziglar certification, where other people are like, man, I wish I could be at that at that point. Tell them about what you stand for, and, and what your clients come to you for, what you speak on, man. Man, I, what I stand for is I, I, I personally, like you said, I have Asperger's. It's a form of autism. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I, what I stand for is that, that other people's observations of you to hold no power over your future unless you mm-hmm. give them the power to control your life. And you can't, if people are going to call you all kinds of things, people are going to give you diagnoses, people are going to give you reasons why you can't do anything. But at the end of the day, you're only limited by your own beliefs. Yeah. You're only limited by, by the actions you take every day. I personally, I had to, like you said, you saying earlier, I had two heart attacks on my journey. I'm 25 years old. There ain't no reason for that. I, I couldn't even go to Walmart with, with, and shop for my own groceries without having a panic attack and end up in the hospital. And people told me, they're like, well, how in the world are you going to become a public speaker? Who do you think you are? Going to stand in front of a thousand people and relay a message that can change their lives forever. Mm-hmm. And I almost, I did believe them for a while there because they, they, they had a really good point. Mm-hmm. But it was something that a fire was lit inside me. And that's what I knew that I was supposed to do. So I know that there, there I mean, there's a way around everything. Mm-hmm. Just like, I mean, the only, the, even taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I knew there was a, a trick somewhere in there. And I heard a quote by Zig Ziglar. And it said, you can have anything in this world that you want if you only help enough other people get what they want. Yeah. And I realized in that moment that I was doing it, I was looking at it all wrong. Mm. See, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about what I wanted. But in order to get what I wanted, I had to bless others. And that's why I say you be the blessing for others and you'll live within blessings for there is no greater purpose in this world than service to others. Mm. And so... That's when I went out and I started giving them pizzas to everybody. And it, I, I say I was making one hundred seventy nine dollars a week. I was I, I took fifty dollars out of each check. I would go out and I'd give them pizzas to homeless folk. I tell I, I sit down beside them and I say, "Tell me your story, brother. Share some wisdom with me." And in that, I found that anxiety was in the mind. It was never in the diagnosis. Hmm. And I believe that. Any challenge that we have, whether it be your uh, your lack of getting clients in your business, your relationship at home, at work, or with your friends, no matter what it is, if you can just come to the realization that the, that you're you are not defined by out outside definitions, mm-hmm. you are defined by what you believe on the inside. There was a guru that once said he's a he's a Buddhist monk. And he said, he said that I am not what you think I am. I am whatever I think you think I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. Like we're, a, we're a function. We show up as a function of how we think other people see us. It's like, yeah, you can say the, the most amount of I am statements in the world when you're, you know, b- behind the, the closed door, when you're looking in the mirror and that makes a difference. It does. And it's like, okay, once you get around, let's say your parents, a lot of people have a challenging relationship with their parents. So when they're around family, they go back to who they were as a kid, you know, like growing up. So if you don't take on that relationship and really challenge those beliefs, challenge those relational dynamics and say, you know what? I love you, but I really don't give a crap what you think. I really like what you think about me does not determine who I am. This is who I am. If you like it, great. Get behind me and support me. If you don't get out of my way, you know? Exactly. And you know what, what the biggest thing about that is, is what a lot of people, their parents, you'd be, you'd be, be shocked how many businesses and brilliant ideas have been shut down because people listen to their parents. I'm going to explain something to you. You can love your mama all you want to. You can love your daddy all you want to. But if they're not where you want to be, why in the world would you listen to anything they got to say? Mm. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. That's right. So, so Tucker, we're going to go back into your journey in just a second here, but we've reached the first 15 minutes of this interview, and we're going to be entering into the first GPS game, and that is to tag three people in the comments. For everyone who's out in Facebook Live, tag three people in the comments and share this video to your profile, and you'll get entered into the drawing. I'll be going back and announcing who is that winner later on, so make sure you tag three people and share this to your profile. You'll be entered into that and you'll win that first game. You'll be entered into the drawing to win that. So Tucker, let's go back into your journey now, okay? Let's go back into that journey and talk about what were some of those challenging moments. You've been on the show before, but just to you know, catch people back up for the, for the real tough parts, the parts where you gain the most wisdom, tell us about your journey, man. Well, I, I have to say there's a few places where my eyes really opened and I began to alter my view of the world. But back in the, back in the day, I was bullied profusely. I, I endured homelessness, addiction, and and on an occasion, I, I actually would had there was a there were five or six men that took me out in the woods. They held me by my arms and my legs. They poured gasoline all over me, and they chased me with Roman candles. And they were they trying to set me on fire. And when I woke up the next day, I kind of. I just wish that one of them fireballs would have ignited the flame because there's, you know, being burned alive can't hurt near as bad as knowing that there ain't nobody in this world you can turn to, nobody to call a friend. So that that night I went home and I, I, that, that day I, I, I sat in the sunroom and with a 410 shotgun, I loaded it up and put the barrel in my mouth. I pulled the trigger with my toe and I heard a click, didn't go off. Mm. Well, after after that, I ended up going down to a place called Cane Creek where there's a bunch of eagles that live down there. And I like I like skipping rocks and watching them fly. It just calms me down. And I, while sitting there skipping them rocks, I looked up and watched an eagle jump from its nest. And in that moment, something clicked with me. And I realized that the most beautiful things in this world are made up of tiny broken pieces brought together to do something great. See, an eagle cannot make its nest out of a large, strong branch. That can only do one thing, and that is support the nest. Mm. The nest the, the nest is compiled of the same things that we are. See, if somebody, if somebody is a large, strong oak, and that's all they've ever been, that it, it they, they cannot be the home to something great. That's where the saying comes from. Show me a man that's the son of a great man. Show me a great man that's the son of a great man. Without trials and tribulations, you cannot become great. It just doesn't happen. Right. We are compiled of tiny broken pieces that are forgotten, discarded, and left for dead. And the, the, but the, the first time... The first time I ever attempted suicide was actually after working at a grocery store. I, I was I was bagging groceries and the customers began flooding in, which sent me into the beginning stages of a panic attack. Mm. And, and and I mean, while I'm laying on the ground, the woman I'd been bagging groceries for was screaming at everybody in the store. Why would you have a retard working for you? What's wrong with you people? Mm. Well, my my boss fired me, sent me home uh, with my final check, and I ended up hanging myself from the second story window. Thankfully, us country bumpkins are a little harder to kill than they, and our necks are kind of strong because it didn't work. <laughs> I laugh about it now, yeah. But uh, that's oh, a, yeah. uh, you have to, man. You have that's to. incredible. Uh, you know, it, it just it opened my eyes to to make me realize that that we're all here for a reason. We're all here for a purpose, and it's okay mm. to be compiled with broken pieces. It's mm. okay to be discarded because eventually that eagle represents your purpose mm. your purpose picks up those pieces brings them together crafts them into and to become the home of something great Wow, that's so powerful, man! And I love that you you like literally have this wisdom, this rock bottom wisdom to to pull from. You know, like feeling at your wits end, feeling like why am I even going to stay in this world any longer? Why am I going to continue to be a part of this? Because like you didn't feel like you belong, you didn't feel like it was worth it, you didn't feel like you you know like had something worth living for. And there was a bigger plan for you, man. Like look at you today, like you're speaking all over, you're empowering people who might be, feel like they're they're lost, they're misunderstood. They 
they don't have value in their life. So I really acknowledge you, man, for, for getting back up after you got knocked down and looking, being aware of life and, and seeing like, wow, you know, I, I attempted to do this twice and it didn't, didn't work out. There must be something here for me. Four times, four times. Damn. Mm-hmm. Four I times. didn't talk about all of them. There's, I, I attempted four times and I nearly pulled, I nearly did it about six or seven times. Wow. The other two times were with, with lethal doses of poison. Wow. That, uh, but again, apparently I'm just, I'm hard to kill, I guess. Either that or I'm just not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and you got, you got some kind of angels or something watching out for you, man. That's, that is yeah, man. It's absolutely incredible. Well, dude, that's, that's amazing. And thank you for sharing that. And for anyone who's going through challenges, tough challenges, you know, you're, you're feeling like at your wits end, like Tucker was definitely reach out to him, send him a message. He's so personable. So like you, you just open a conversation. So if you have any questions for Tokyo, Tucker, you know, ask in this interview and also reach out to him. He'll be sharing about how, how you can do that at the end of course as well. Uh, but yeah, dude, Tucker, this is, this is incredible, man. So you go through this, this phase and then I know it, at some point you started tapping into the power of, of Ted talks, right? So I think it was like, you were just trying to pass time and, and you discover them. Tell us what that discovery was like. And when you first started, you know, getting, diving into Ted talks, like what that did, how it started shaping and changing your world. Well, uh, during the time, I I was where everybody is at some point in their life. Yeah. I had no purpose. I had no vision, and in turn, I was depressed. I was I was I, I was sad. I was working seven days a week, three hundred sixty five days a year. I didn't get a single day off for three years, and folks yeah. complain about working on Saturday. <laughs> I think that's funny, yeah. but. I lived in like a 10 foot by 10 foot concrete room where they held saddles and, and tack for the horses. And I was I just in there every day lost. I had no vision of anything. And I was searching through YouTube trying to do what I'm sure many of you watching right now have tried to do. And that is find free movies on YouTube. And <laughs> as you know, it can't be done. <laughs> So after finding clickbait after clickbait after clickbait, yeah. all of a sudden I came across this fella called Ty Lopez. Mm. And after watching a video of his that was like six hours long, it was the longest video I've ever seen. He was in his garage with a suitcase, and I'm sitting there like, what's in the suitcase? Tell me already. <laughs> and he wouldn't tell me. And then below that, I saw this big red Ted. And I'm mm. like, what the heck is that? Like, mm. And so I click on it, and it was Simon Sinek's video, Start With Why. Wow. And it was, it, it, my everything started to begin to shift. I, I, don't, I didn't know what it was, but listening to him up there and seeing them folks in the crowd, their eyes lit up. And, you, and I knew that the feeling I was feeling, the people in the crowd were feeling, and I knew in that moment it just clicked. I felt a fire light deep within the catacombs of my spirit. This is what I meant to do. This is what I was put here for. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I did that, that voice that we all have in the back of our head came into play. Who do you think you are? Mm-hmm. You've been, they, yeah, they diagnosed you this as a child. You're, you are defined as someone who cannot communicate with people. What makes you think it, it, that you can speak to 100, 200, 1,000, or even 10 people and change their life? And that's when I came across that quote by Zig Ziglar. And I, 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 so I started blessing others, mm. going out, and I would bring us, and then I heard other TED Talks. I was well, listening to multiple, five or six of them every day, mm. pulling as much of them in as I could, and somebody, I saw a TED Talk where it talked about writing things down. It mm. said that a, a goal that is not written on paper is just a dream. So I started writing it down. I said, I am a, a, a renowned public speaker. I, I, I speak on TED, the TED stage. I, I make $10,000 or more a month speaking into the world. I, mm. I empower people and help save lives. And I wrote this down every day and added details to it every single day. Got more and more detailed until I was filling up notebooks. Wow. I've got stacks and stacks mm. of notebooks. Like, they're right here. I've got stacks yeah. on of these details. And then after after a few weeks of taking these pizzas out and going and talking to folks, all of a sudden I got a phone call 
from the people up on Millionaire's Road. Now, Millionaire's Road is a place at Churchill Downs where you pay a whole slew of money to sit at the very top in this big fancy area and watch the horses race. Wow. Well, they hollered at me and they were like, hey, we want you to come give a speech. We're trying to earn some money. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, cool. So I, I go over there and, and I, I come in and there's everybody sitting at tables and there's caters and everything. I had never seen a white cloth thing before. I was, I'm was i a country bunk and I, I came in in a white t-shirt, boots, blue jeans, and an old messed up belt. I thought I was looking good. I was like, <laughs> It even had a, my shirt had a hole in the back of it, but wow. I tucked it in so nobody could see it. <laughs> and, uh, and I get up there and I start speaking, and the crowd went from talking to completely silent. Wow. And they're sitting on the edge of their seat listening. And instead of earning ten thousand dollars, I think we earned like it was either forty or sixty thousand dollars or something like that. Wow. And when I got down, I got a stand. When I stepped off stage, I got a standing ovation. Everybody went crazy and they wanted to take pictures with me and stuff. I'm like, man, I might actually be pretty good at this. Yes. That was that fuel for that fire. And I've been going balls to the wall ever since. Dude, that's incredible, man. Like, what were some of the the thoughts that were going through your head that you had to overcome to be able to like get up there and start speaking, especially in the beginning? It was, if it wasn't for going out and speaking to them homeless folk, I never yeah. would have been able to do it. Wow. And if, if, so to answer your, uh, to answer your question, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd have to say that it was realizing that it wasn't about me wow. because at its core, anxiety is the fear that one of a pair of opposites will cancel each other out. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah. And when you come to understand that, and that's something you might have to sit down and think about for a little while. One of a pair of opposites may possibly cancel each other out. So that was what was causing it. And the anxiety I was feeling was because of a internal belief that I was being judged whenever people weren't even looking at me. I was feeling like they were talking about me, even though they didn't even know I was there. It was just this subconscious voice. So, When I got on stage, I was nervous, but I was excited because the affirmations that everybody said, if you write down your affirmations, they will happen. Mm. You you can speak things into existence. And now I'm seeing it in person. I'm like, I'm on millionaire's road. This is where this is where the big dogs come. I'm a hey, I'm a I'm a country boy with some backwoods wisdom. I I ain't that's that's all it is. Like I'm I come from the holler. I'm like, where? I don't even, why am I up here? But I was the person that they called. And I had not told anybody that I wanted to speak. It just happened. So I knew that it was real. I knew that you could speak things into existence. So when I was up there and and I was speaking for the first time, at at first, that knock was in my stomach. I'm like, oh God, here we go. I'm really, I'm really doing this. But then all of a sudden when everybody went quiet and I realized that they found value in what I was saying mm-hmm. and that it was actually impacting them. And that number on the screen behind me was going. Bang. Like rising up. I was like, I got that fire lit. And yeah. you know how that feels. Yep. You know, whenever you, you start off, it's all good. But then all of a sudden that spark goes, bam. Yep. And you're like, woo. Let's Next go. level. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's what it was like. Dude. Uh, so, and, and I, I it's it's just been it's been getting better better each time, but I still have challenges. It's not it's not easy, but it's purpose, and yeah. purpose has more power than anything. Wow, that's incredible, man. So, like, what what can you recommend for people who may maybe speaking on stage is their passion, is their purpose, or they're still discovering it? You know, like, what would you recommend for those people? And like, can they have that same experience of being like lit on fire and having the the passion like ooze out of them, like how you how it happened with you, just feel ignited, feel on fire? Absolutely. Anybody, see, anybody can do this. There was a lady one time at an airport. I was waiting on my plane and she asked me what I did and, and, and what, what I do. I told her, I told her about it. And she, 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 so she was like, you have Asperger's? And I was like, yes, ma'am. She's like, I can hard, I can't hardly tell. I was like, well, I've been working on myself since I was knee high to a grasshopper. 
Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it takes, it, it's taking time. And she's like, well, you know, not anybody can do that. And I was like, why? She's like, well, you're special. I was like, special? No, <laughs> ain't nobody in this world special. Mm-hmm. Everybody is capable of doing these things. It's, yeah. it, it's just, if you're out there right now, if this is your passion, no matter what your passion is, no matter what it is that you dream of doing, just know that it is not going to be easy. This is going to sound cheesy because you've heard it a million times, but it's the best analogy because it's so true. And that is if you stand at the edge of the cliff and you watch everybody else parachute down, you watch everyone else flying in their airplanes, it's a nice view. But at the end of the day, you're never going to get where they're getting. You're never going to glide if you don't jump. But here's a part, here's part of it that sucks, and I'm just going to be honest with you. And that is, your parachute's not going to open when you jump. You're, you you got to jump, and you got to build an airplane on the way down. That's you're going to hit sticks. You're going to hit rocks. You're going to get scraped. You're going to get hurt. It's gonna, you're going to cry. You're going to want to quit. You're going to scream. You're going to ask God, why? Why do I have to go through all this? Hmm. But as long as you jump, one way or another, you're going to get there. Is yeah. you just keep going at it mm. every single day. But but here's the problem. Here's the mistake that people make. Mm. People think that when they go to do a big thing, they try to eat an elephant at half at a time, or they mm. try to do it all in one bite, and it can't be done. Mm. Even you got to make small changes, even if it's getting out of bed on a different side today yeah. or tomorrow. If it's writing something down when you didn't yesterday, yeah. it's taking a different path to work. Yeah. Switch things up and different things will happen in your world. And this mm. thing in the mind known as the reticular activating system will kick in. When you want something and you begin programming yourself to, to see those things, mm. all of a sudden, you're the neuro, literally neuro passageways in the brain begin to open up did not before and your reticular activating system begins to notice things that it didn't before that will push you towards your goal it may only push you a centimeter centimeter it may only push you an inch but one day one day you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go and think you think you're gonna go an inch and then suddenly boom you went a mile and then you're like whoa wait a minute how the heck what just happened (laughs) but that's how it works it that is, is man. Exactly how it works. It I is. know that. I know that you experienced that with this show. Hundred so, percent, man. It's like just a opening up a portal, you know, a portal to to possibility. It's like it, it's almost like the, the sometimes the the increase and in the impact is so gradual that you can't see it. But then you like look back and you're like, holy moly! Like what if like yeah. two years of doing these twelve hour marathons this is marathon seventy nine, interviewing four hundred thirty five guests. It's absolutely incredible, man. It's Tucker. It's just like right. mind blowing what we're capable of when we put our mind to it. Sometimes it's that quantum leap that just totally is like wow, you know, blows our mind. And and sometimes it's the gradual prog- progress. But what I really love what you said is that, you know, it's just doing one thing differently today. Like start by writing something down. Start by being grateful. Start by going and doing some exercise, going on a walk, doing a little bit of meditation, you know, taking that time to really care for yourself and nurture yourself. And I want to talk about um, your background in theoretical physics. We talked about that before in a second, but we're also at the 30 minute mark for the 12 hour mer- or for this interview. So now we're going to go into the fast GPS game. So anyone out in the Facebook live stream, I'm going to type in the, the comment, Fast GPS, and you can have a chance to win your book for the day by commenting right after this. Okay, so comment right now and make sure you go to beergps.com forward slash book contest to enter into the contest. Good or good? Very good. So first person to comment wins. Tucker, let's get back to theoretical physics, man. How how and why did you go into this field? Because like you're talking about neurons, you're talking about you know all this amazing stuff. You're, you're brilliant, dude. How did you get into that? Well, ever since I was a child, I I was all I, I would spend hours on end staring at things that mm. you would see. Most people would think that it it was boring, mm. like a leaf or a rock mm. or a tree. I would just sit and stare, and in my mind, I would break it down and 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 view. And when I was a child, I didn't know that it was what I was doing, but I was breaking it down on a molecular level. Wow. And seeing what it was made up of. Now, obviously, as a child, the things I was seeing were were sub, were subconsciously generated imaginations. 
Hmm. I mean, they were not, they obviously I can't actually see it on a quantum scale, but for instance, one of the things that I've always done, and it's really annoying, and it's the reason that I think I shouldn't be allowed to drive sometimes, <laughs> and that is that when, I'm going, when, I, when I look around at things, it, it, out of nowhere, things will be taken apart, and I'll see everything that makes it up, and then it comes back together, and, and it's almost like it, it like for instance, driving down the road, I, I, sometimes I look over and see an 18-wheeler, and then all of a sudden there's a white void and I can see every part of the truck being taken apart and then brought back together. Well, I didn't understand this, but what but what I started noticing whenever I was writing those, those affirmations down is that the law of attraction is real, yeah. but I couldn't understand it. I was like, so it works, but why? Why does this work? Mm -hmm. So I started looking into why it works. And then I found quantum physics, which is the study of how things work. So I was like, okay, so if I study this and it tells me how things work, eventually I'll figure out how quantum, uh, how how uh, the law of attraction works. And then it happened. I realized that quantum physics has proven the law of attraction. If you look on YouTube, you'll find a thing called the double split experiment. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but it's where you take a hydrogen laser. You have two splits in a, in a, in a piece of metal. They're very small. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you fire particles at the center of it. Now, what happens is when you're in observation of, the, uh, of this happening, they pick one side or the other. And there's a piece of paper on the other side that, that marks where they hit. They'll make two lines. But as soon as you look away and there's no camera recording, there's nothing, there's no person looking, it makes a wave pattern, which means there's lines all the way across. Now, how do you make a wave pattern? In order to make a wave pattern, the only possible way to do it is for them, for each single particle to take the left side, the right side, the center, to go around it and to go through it. So it takes every possible path at the exact same time, completely defying laws of physics. Now, what does this mean? This means that the energy that makes up everything around you literally is conscious of observation. And if the observation of a particle on a quantum scale causes it to change its route, then, uh, which in turn changes the route of other particles, then the observation of particles on a base scale, and you, will cause them to change over a period of time. This is, this is uh, why affirmations work. This is why the law of attraction works. And this is why there is no physicist in the world that doesn't believe in God, even though most physicists are not religious. I'm not religious, but I know God exists because physics proves it. Right. It's, there's, there's no denying it. Yeah. Everything, is, this, the energy that makes up everything is sentient. It's conscious. And it knows that you're there. So yeah. that's where that's where it came from. And that's why I study it so avidly. So powerful, man. And and I really acknowledge you because like you are changing the world just by showing up, just by speaking, just by going live. You have your show, Stay Humble, Hustle Hard, which I was I was blessed enough to to be a guest on a while back. And it was just like an amazing experience. You're a great interview interviewer, you're a great speaker, you're a great communicator. Tell us more about like going live or going home. Tell us like what does that mean? You know, stay humble, hustle hard live. Like what what does that mean to to go live or go home? Okay, well, I, when I wanted, I wanted to become a public speaker, but I had no idea how to get my face in front of people. Why would you hire me to get on your stage? What's the point? What, who am I? So I heard a guy named Marshall Gillen. I know that some of y'all watching know who he is. And he said, one day I watched one of his videos and he said, this is, the, he pulled up his phone and he was like, this is the new TV. This is what people, instead of flipping through channels, they're scrolling through Facebook. And if you can, if you go live at a specific time and you keep it consistent, you become one of those channels mm. that people want to tune into and they want to see the series. They want to see what goes is coming next. So I was like, man, that makes a lot of sense. So I started going live, and they were horrible. <laughs> they were terrible. <laughs> My first videos, I got no views, no comments, no likes. I was doing it. I did it for almost a year. Mm. And the, with uh, for going live for almost a year, I might have got at most 10 likes on a video. 
Wow. I was like, I was like, man, this is so hard. No, I must not be good at what I do. Mm. But then I, I just started switching it up. And instead of getting on there and talking about myself, I started providing value. Wow. But instead, but instead of just providing value, I combined teaching people with telling my story. Yeah. And the reason I tell people go live or go home is because when you go live, when you're on video, when you tell your story, not only are you impacting somebody who's watching this right now, yeah. that's why all of you should share this out because you never know who needs to hear this message. You never know whose life you can save. People have called me up and said, I was on the verge of suicide. I saw your video and you made me change my mind. I, my, I was on the verge of divorce. And now my, we have a happy family because you were able, that video, just one line in that video made me open my eyes. So, I, so in telling my story, not only was I impacting people, being a blessing for others and living within blessings, mm -hmm. I was also had resources coming from everywhere. I was just blown away. Like, mm. you see these books behind me? Yeah. That's where they come from. Yep. Like, these, that, these, these books and stuff like this, like this right here. Look, yes. this is a postcard with my logo on it that somebody, a guest on my show sent me. Wow. And, and, and the, when you begin to go live, when you start sharing your story, <laughs> people not people begin to get connected to you. They yeah. want to be a part of your world. And everyone, everybody is a book worth reading if you'll only turn the pages hmm. and, and see every book, whether it's fiction or fact, has some kind of value in it. Yeah. And if you can come to understand that and share your story enough to where people want to connect with you, then the things that you need, they will come without you asking for them. Wow. You will. I, I, I've spoken all over the country because I go live on Facebook. Yep. Yep. It, it, I mean, it's it is. It's go live or go home. Don't complain. Get on camera. I love it. And it's it, like you said earlier, it's like really learning how to tell your story in a powerful way. Whether you are an influencer, whether you're a leader of yourself, your family, your community, whether you have a business leader, I love it. I love it, man. That's awesome. So it's like wherever you're at, you must develop your ability to tell your story, right? Like the more you, you are effective at that, the better you're able to convey the lessons and the wisdom, the more you will be fulfilled. Because when people keep their stories to themselves, their journey, their their obstacles, the wisdom that they've experienced because of the challenges, because of the hardship in their life, if they keep that to themselves, then who, like, who is it doing good for? Nobody, mm -hmm. right? It's not doing anybody good. But if, if you take that opportunity to really craft your story and your message to understand how is this person receiving it? How is this making a difference? How is it landing for them? Then that's so yeah. powerful to increase your influence in the world, to make the world a better place, to share your pain so that other people don't have to go through the same thing. And Tucker, what I'm hearing is when people go live, they have the opportunity to share that wisdom and to not be selfish, rather to be generous, to be abundant, to be prosperous with their wisdom and help other people to not make those same mistakes. Exactly. And you know what's crazy about it is there's people out there that go, well, why would people want to listen to me? What do I have? to teach. Look, everybody's been through trials and tribulations. Everybody's walked through the valley. Everybody's climbed the mountain in some way, shape, form, or fashion and realized that once you get to the top of that mountain, it's a beautiful view. But that valley that's smooth is just a stepping stone to your next mountain. And I believe this wholeheartedly because it is true. And that is that if you have, which you do, if you have information capable of improving the lives of others, mm -hmm. it is no more than an act of selfishness to withhold that information from the world mm -hmm. because you don't know who's out there, whose life you will save, what mm -hmm. relationship you will save, what business you will start that ends up changing an entire you, – you, you can create generational change. You may, you may go to Walmart today and, and compliment somebody mm -hmm. and say, man – Dude, those are some nice shoes, bro. Like that is awesome. And then all of a sudden, because he's in a hype, he's in a good mood now. He don't go home and beat his wife, and his mm. wife don't go and beat that child, and that child don't become a bully at school, and that bully doesn't go and shoot up the school. See, it's more than just the words coming out of your mouth. See, we we don't say these things, and we don't tell our stories for us. It's not about us. It's about how much you can create, what kind of ripple, 
can you affect? You, 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 you literally shift the tides of change, mm-hmm. and eventually that ripple will hit every shore. Mm-hmm. And that's the goal. That's it to create generational change wherever you go, no matter how small it is. So when people are first starting off on this journey, they might feel like they're not making enough change fast enough. They don't see the impact. They don't see those ripples. Um, how did you overcome that? Man, you don't know. That's the thing. Hmm. Ninety, and, and this is a made-up statistic, but I think it's true. It's like 80 to 90% of the effect you have on people, you're never going to know about. Hmm. They're not going to reach out and tell you. It happens, but and know that it happens. It does, but they, they may not comment on your video. I've had people that told me they were they were like, bro. They they reached out to me, added me on Facebook, and, and messaged me, and they're like, hey, I've been watching your videos for over a year. I've never commented and never liked them, but I just want you to say, I just want you to know that that you helped me through A, B, C, whatever it is, and I didn't even know they were there. I didn't even know they were listening. So when you think people aren't listening and you think you're not making an impact, know that, look, you can throw a pebble in a pond, Mm. okay? And that remember that that pond, it's slick as glass. You throw that pebble in the pond and it creates a ripple. Well, when when you can't see that ripple anymore, the energy is still there. It's Mm. still being dispersed. Just because you can't see the motion doesn't mean it's not there. And even more so, you can't see what that pebble did as it was sinking to the bottom, hmm. what it was imp- what it was touching on the way down. You can't see all the molecules that it shifted out of the way and caused them to shift others and caused them to shift others. You can't see it because it's below the water, just like the, just like the, the iceberg. You yeah. only see the tip. But what really matters is that chunk that you can't see that's below the water. You know, you know, this, this is awesome. This is awesome. Cause I was, I was talking about this earlier today. When you write, when you write with a pen on a piece of paper, you are shifting the molecules in the universe to create an, an impact that you don't even recognize. And this is a perfect analogy. Like you see it on the fur on the surface, you see it on the paper, but you don't know the deep, you know, like iceberg level of impact yeah. that that writing is having. And I think that that's the most, like, it's so incredible, man. And so we're at the 45 minute mark. And for everyone who's tuned into the Facebook live, this is where you get to share your biggest takeaway from this interview so far. And the best one, I'm going to go back and read them all. And you get entered into a contest to win a book, a self-help book for the day. So make sure you also enter the contest be your gps.com forward slash book contest and you'll be have you'll have a chance to win so share your biggest takeaway and tucker you know i want to hear about your biggest piece of wisdom that you got in 2018 man what was one of the biggest revelations and realizations that you got from this last year brother that without the darkness your light would hold no value wow without your without your pain without the trials and tribulations that are in your life Mm. You, the days where things are easy, it wouldn't it wouldn't be worthwhile. You know, you you never do appreciate the sun until the until winter has passed. You never appreciate the uh, an air conditioner until you've been until you've been out working in the heat. You never appreciate that drink of water until your water got shut off for a week and you didn't have access to it. So know that the times that you're deep within the valley. You're, you're, it's dark. You're, you, you don't, you don't know which way to go. And, and, and honestly, there is no right direction. Mm. Any direction is better than none. And eventually, and that's the thing about a valley, it's deep and it's dark, but any direction you go will eventually get you out of it. If you will just keep going, if you'll just keep moving and know that, that the, your pain is your power. Your challenges are your greatness. These things, wisdom comes from experience. See, knowledge is knowing. Wisdom is doing. Hmm. It's the act of getting it done. And I, and that's, that is that is my greatest hmm. understanding that has happened throughout my entire life. 2018, hmm. where it resonated and it really got solidified. But it's simply that without your darkness, the light would hold no value. And remember, above all, that if you can be the spark that lights the way through the darkness for even a single person a day, it doesn't matter if your name isn't remembered throughout history. Your entire life will be worthwhile. 
too. That's so powerful, Tucker. And really, that's that's like when people are going through that struggle, when they're going through that darkness. If you don't have that, then you can't really appreciate the light, the the joy, the the fulfillment, the love in your life. And so, people who are get get all this success early on in life, you know, they they take actions, they take um, you know, like entitled actions. They they are ungrateful, they're unappreciative, and it causes them to take it for granted, which makes them take other actions that are you know toxic or that cause them to lose it right stay humble stay humble hustle hard that's right tucker has a big old tattoo on his arm i love that i love that man it's really like staying humble being open to the wisdom that life is here to teach us dude and you're totally a student man so i'm curious how did you how do you show up as a student now and how do you recommend other people um, take on that student and kind of humble mentality themselves Understand, uh, you have to understand that even a white belt can knock out a master. Every dog has their day, wow. and every master will eventually fall. You can be a, the world's greatest blacksmith, can make the world's greatest shields and the world's sharpest swords, but he still gets burned by the fires that forge them. Mm. You're going to fall on your face. Mm. It's going to hurt. You're going to get scratched. You're going to break bones. Things are going to happen. Your heart's going to be ripped from your chest, and you're going to think it's the end of the world. True. But that's part of it. And in these moments, that's when you're humbled. So you can either be humble or you can be humbled. Yeah. And that's what that's what we need, though. We need those moments that, that force us to realize that we are a student. Because when you make a mistake, that it, no matter how big or small, that right there is all the evidence you need that you don't know everything and that you never will know everything. One of the wisest men that ever lived said, the only thing I truly know is that I know nothing. Is that Aristotle? That, it, I think it's Aristotle. Uh, there you go. Good job. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's and it's not that he, know, he doesn't know anything. It's that things change and that yeah. you're, what you think is absolute today yeah. cannot, will, 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 could be completely different tomorrow. In the world of physics, a particle can disappear from existence and literally reappear on the other side of physical matter without any explanation whatsoever. It literally disappears from nothing and reappears from nothing. And we didn't think that was possible 100 years ago. But now, all of a sudden, we know that to be true. Hmm. Things change, and you will always, always be a student. You'll always keep learning. It says in the, I'm not getting religious, but it says in the Bible, refine your mind daily because nobody knows everything. And to be honest, what fun would it be if you knew everything? <laughs> <laughs> there would be no more room for growth, you know? And it's like people, people who have that mindset of I know everything that shuts off the learning. It shuts down the growth. Like you literally stagnate. You literally say, eh, I don't got anything else to, to learn or to expand into universe. Like I'm done with you. I don't, I don't need you anymore kind of thing. It's like, I'm, it's like an isolationist mindset. Like I'm done. I'm, I'm cutting myself off from the supply and there's so yes. much juice. There's so much energy from the supply of the universe and universal wisdom. So I really, really love that, man. So tell us more about 2019 and what you got planned for 2019, Tucker. Well, we have a TV show that we're working on. And besides speaking on stage, I have a book that I have several books coming out in 2019. One of them is, is a version of the Keep Smiling books. I don't yep. know if y'all heard of those, yep. um, but they have. I have one coming out in January or February, I'm not sure. Hopefully, it comes out February 1st, my birthday. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, besides that, we're working on a TV show, and it's called From Homeless to Coming Home. We're partnering with the Make-A-Wish Foundation as well as Home Depot and Lowe's. And what we're doing is we're going out, we're interviewing homeless veterans, and we're, we're giving them a platform to share their story on a global scale. Because like I said, when you share your story on camera, resources come that otherwise would not be there. So we get them off the streets. We put them in a home. We teach them financial literacy. We fix their credit. We, we, we have them become a published author with the Keep Smiling movement. Mm. And then and we, we eventually put them in a home that they will over time own. So and we get them a job that as well. So we take we're taking the people who are the hardest worked and are, and they're they're overworked and underpaid and they went and they served our country and our country refuses to serve them. 
So we're taking the opportunity to bring that to the world in the hopes that more people will open their eyes and realize Mm -hmm. that these soldiers do come home and overseas, they're fighting for the person next to them. They're fighting for you. They're fighting for me. But when they come here, they don't have anybody to fight for you. Mm. So let's uh, let's take them off the streets and go from homeless to coming home. <laughs> I love it, Tucker, dude. You're on fire, man. Your your communication, your um, you know, your syntax, your ability to talk and and have a point and land, have your stories, your message reach people is absolutely incredible, brother. And I know our audience is absolutely like hungry. They're they're they have a voracious appetite to keep being inspired by amazing people just like you, Tucker. And they want to know how can they stay connected? How can they continue their journey with the Tucker Bearden? What's the next step for them, man? Man, if y'all want to holler at me, I you can actually – sorry about that. nose was itching. Um, <laughs> but you can holler at me on Facebook, just Tucker Bearden. You'll see a picture of me on stage taking a selfie in front of a crowd. Uh, it's not – I'm the I, – I, when you Google Tucker Bearden, I dominate the SEO. I'm easy to find. Uh, so you can do that. You can look up Tucker Bearden Inspiring the World. It's got about 20,000 followers. It might be 18,000. I'm not 100% sure. I don't use it much, but I do share things to it. Look up Stay Humble, Hustle Hard Live on 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 Facebook. That is my personal show. My tattoo is my brand. That's my logo. So and now you know what it looks like. It's easy to find. You uh, you got to get on there and check out some of our episodes. Go check out Chris's episode because yeah. it's pretty awesome. And <laughs> and he did he did an amazing job in there. You can find me on YouTube. Just Tucker Bearden. Check me out on YouTube. Uh, I, and also, uh, I will I can give you a number to contact me at. If you would like to contact me, you can. It's 501 625 2342. And that's, and if you have an issue, if you have, if you have a challenge that you can't overcome, I'm not going to go answer the phone and be like, all right, give me your credit card information. I'm not going to charge you. I'm here to serve. Mm. I'm here to be the blessing. And I genuinely want to connect with each and every one of you. So that's how you can get in touch with me. You're an amazing human being, Tucker. I really appreciate you. I'm proud of you, man, for what you've stepped up to. You said you're 25, right? Like so yeah. fiery, so so much you know, wisdom in such a short amount of time. This is just the beginning for both of us, dude. So I really, really acknowledge you, Tucker, for stepping up to the plate and being an incredible human being who inspires the world. Thank you for who you are, and we appreciate you coming on. And I swear, we're going to have you back on again, man. You're, you're so much fun to have on, and you're just a blast, dude. Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world, Tucker. Hey, man, look, all I ask is that you go out and be that spark in the darkness for somebody. It's up to them to breathe life into it and create a raging flame. But you never know when somebody's walking through that darkness and all they need is that spark in the distance, Mm -hmm. something to follow, a northern star. Be that for someone. You're, You're a powerhouse, man. Thanks so much for coming on. We'll see you soon, okay? Be blessed. All right, take care.